key component within our home church gatherings will be the Word of God. Um, preaching the Word of God, studying the Word of God, gathering around the Bible in some way. And what we'll find is sometimes there might be a season, two or three weeks, maybe four weeks, where some of that teaching comes in from outside. A guest may come in and one of the ministry team might come in and teach. There might be three or four weeks of videos, 15 minutes each, um, that are brought in by the, the senior team to say, hey, let's get all the home churches on the same page on this subject, whatever the subject may be. And there'll be other times that the home church pastor will be preaching. Uh, other times that the home church pastor will be releasing one of the team in the, in the home church to preach. And be their training or equipping. There'll be times that they'll be facilitating a Bible study. So it's less of a preach or a teach from the front, front and more of a guided conversation, a study around a text. Let's say we have six weeks looking at the book of Ephesians. Um, well, it's the job of the home church pastor to be able to look after those six weeks. But they may do the first week themselves and introduce it. They may then have another person or a couple facilitating the next week. They may facilitate the week after. Uh, and then they might encourage somebody to join them in facilitating. This is where body ministry comes in. We're not looking for a home church pastor to preach a 30, 40 minute message every single week. It's a mixture of what comes in from outside the wider apostolic family. You'll hear something coming from that. Sometimes a series of teaching there. Then there may be days that we might even say, let's have a, a gathering that's going to be a mission or uh, open up the garden, put a barbecue on, have friends come in. I say all of that to say that I don't want home church pastors to feel the pressure that they are having to prepare a 20, 30, 40 minute sermon every week. That won't be the case. Uh, but there will be times that you will be opening up the scriptures. And my, my hope is that, that there'll be enough time for you to prepare and do things without feeling burdened to do it. And there'll be other times you're not preaching, you're facilitating. And I, I, before I make a few comments on preaching, let me just share the importance of facilitation. Being a facilitator is an art. It's having a group of in the home. It could be six people. It could be 12 or 15 people opening up a discussion. Let's say the discussion is on Ephesians 1. You read the chapter through. There may be a few questions. People may have read it in the week. How do we keep 10 people? Um, how do we guide them on a conversation around the passage we've just read? It takes a bit of skill. It takes the ability to listen. It takes the ability to invite those who aren't speaking to make a contribution if they're comfortable to do that. Um, so that one or two people don't just hog the whole conversation or one person who's been waiting to say their piece. We want to hear from them, but we also want to hear from the quiet person who's reflective and maybe a little bit shy. And as a facilitator, it's my job then to involve everybody in that discussion around what we're doing. And facilitation isn't just around scriptural Bible study. It, it happens a lot in lots of different settings. And I, I, you know, just the home church are there. Everybody's having discussions. My awareness or your awareness as a home church pastor, that person's quiet today. Uh, how do I pull them into the conversation or how do I go quietly alongside them just to make sure they're OK? I think that emotional awareness, social awareness, group dynamics is going to be an important way for us to live. And I do realize when somebody has a tender heart as a leader, their heart's tender before the Lord. They are more sensitive to those things. If they're only aware of themselves or the task at hand, we, we can become insensitive to other people. So uh, as home church pastors, I want you to think about, yes, I will be preaching and I'll also be facilitating. I'll also be inviting other people to preach as well. The word of God is central to our gathering together. We want to open up the scriptures. We want them to be read. We want them to be understood. And so I, I think a home church meeting where God's word and praying together doesn't happen would be a really sad day um, in terms of if we're gathered together because we're Jesus lovers, what he has given to us in his written word, he the living word, it should be something naturally we want to do. Let's go to preaching right now. 
I think my, um, we have a separate e-course for preachers, so you may want to look that up and it will be made available to you. Uh, it's a number of sessions, so I'm not going to do this in detail right now. Uh, one of the things I realize is that preaching has been purposed or commanded by God. Um, Acts 10, 42, we're commanded to go preach the good news. How can people hear uh, if they don't, um, if nobody speaks the message? Uh, it acts as he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify. Or Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the good news. So it's commanded. It's a means of salvation and growth for people. It's ordained by the Lord. It's a privilege that we can be involved in this, and that we can give of our lives to help others through, uh, through uh, preaching. And preaching isn't outdated. It still works. I, I, there's something in human nature that wants to hear people who have something to say to say it. It's not a TED talk. It has to carry the life of the spirit on it, which actually comes from the life of the preacher. The secret life of a person puts the weightiness in the words that they speak. A person who lives tender and whole and worshipful before the Lord as a disciple themselves, when they open up the scriptures and begin to read, regardless of their charisma, whether they're loud or energetic uh, or whether they're quiet, it doesn't really matter. If they've been alone with God and they are wrestling over what they're teaching, it's worked into their hearts. As they begin to open up the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will touch it. And history teaches us that it isn't just one type of preaching we're looking for. So you're in your own skin, your own personality. Preaching is commanded. It's a privilege. It's a means of salvation and growth. It's also a responsibility that we've been given. And then I would add, it does become an art. The longer I've preached, the more I've realized how I could get better at what I do. Sometimes better in my preparation, sometimes better in my delivery nearly all the time, the life of the preacher, it actually impacts everything we say and do. And so it, it kind of, the, if, if uh, Ian Bounds uses this phrase, he said, it's like oil flowing through a pipe. If the pipe is dirty, whatever is flowing through the pipe also uh, comes through. And so the pipe must be golden, clean, pure. So the message coming through carries that sense of God's anointing on it. So, and we develop that over time. So the life of a preacher is absolutely critical to preaching and even to facilitating. It's critical to a home church that the, 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 the leader there, a few leaders, the trainee leaders, realize that their life before God has a deep impact on the world around them. Uh, there's so much I could say on the life of the preacher. I, I, I would say for me, one of the things is that key moment every day, uh, maybe it's an hour, a couple of hours more, on a morning that is non-negotiable with the Lord. I know we live in a Western culture that tells me, hey, 15 minutes is enough, 20 minutes is enough. I think to go deep in the things of God, time is required. And all of us have more time than we think if we give time to the things that really matter. And so unapologetically, I would encourage anybody that's going to lead, open up God's word, try and teach anybody else that we have a private history with God that we are building every single day. It's like a rich well. We, we do prepare a message, but actually our lives are the message as well. Um, I heard in Ian Bounds' book, he says it takes 20 years to make a sermon because it takes 20 years to make the person. And, and I'm helping you to understand if we're going to preach well, facilitate well, we have to allow the Lord to be working on the vessel. It's not just about the dynamics of Bible study or the dynamics of, of, of preaching. In fact, Ian Bound says God's plan is to make much more of the person, far more of him or her than of anything else. And that people are God's method. And I want to encourage you, yes, learn about communication. Yes, study the Bible. It's, in, it's important that we do that. But our lives really influence what we do and how we do it. It has a huge impact. One final thing I'll say 
and because this is short, I can't give you a lot, but I point you towards the preaching e-course that will help you. But the final thought here is also the wholeness of my heart has an impact on my preaching or the lack thereof. If there's any unresolved issues, if there's any pride, if there's any offense, if there's any unforgiveness, if my heart isn't tender before the Lord, it will impact in a good way or a negative way. If it's clean and it's whole, it's going to be positive. If it isn't, then there's going to be this, it's going to impact what happens. And I just write down five steps to become whole. We've got to learn to live in the Father's love. Nothing transforms us like living in Heavenly Father's love. Secondly, uh, remember that our worth doesn't come from preaching or from teaching or from facilitating or from being a leader. It actually comes from being with the Father and who he is and what he says over our lives. Thirdly, I'd encourage us we walk with him daily. It's in that place that we become better at doing the tasks that we've been given to do. And fourthly, be honest with yourself. If you see things coming up in you, anger, agitation, um, I ask myself, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel insecure right now? Why do I feel that when that person walks into the room? A part of growing is learning ourselves, then bringing it to Christ, maybe sometimes in community with trusted friends so that we can deal with things and grow. So, yeah, be honest with yourself. Ask yourself how to grow. Ask the Lord. Go to the scriptures. Walk with other people. And then uh, fifth, learn, encourage us. We walk openly and vulnerably with other people. These are just five simple steps to becoming whole. This community aspect, I'm walking with others. I'm honest with myself. I'm walking daily with God. I'm remembering my worth comes from him, not what I do. And I'm going to live in the abiding love of God. I want to encourage you, God's raising up hundreds, if not thousands of new preachers and leaders in our day. And maybe you're called to be one of them, um, but your lifestyle plays into it. And you will not only learn to preach, but you'll learn to facilitate, handle, guide conversations, speak freely. The more whole you are, the better you will do that.